An important question we need to consider is, is Allah, the God of the Quran and Islam, the same God as Jehovah, the God of the Bible? The answer is clearly no from this table, where we compare the beliefs, nature and personality of Allah as taught in the Quran, in the left-hand column, with Satan's beliefs, nature and personality as revealed in the Bible, in the middle column, along with Jehovah, the God of the Bible's beliefs, nature and personality as revealed in the Bible. These are written in both English and Farsi, which is the language of Iran. Reading across the page, we discover, first of all, that Allah is a murderer, because in the Quran, Surah 47, verse number 4, we read, Muslims should strike off the heads of unbelievers in the battlefield and massacre them. When the Arabs attacked Iran, Persia, from 634 AD, the Muslim Arabs burnt the palaces, burnt the libraries, and if you and I had been living there, they would have cut your head off and everyone else's head off. Why? Because Allah in the Quran told them that's what they must do. Now, if you look at the middle column, you will see that Satan in the Bible is described in John 8 verse 44 as the devil was a murderer from the beginning. So both Allah is a murderer and Satan is a murderer. If you compare Jehovah, the God of the Bible, in the third column, we read in 1 John 3:15, God tells us that no murderer has eternal life. And in Matthew 5:44, Jesus tells us to love your enemies. Which is better, to love your enemies or to cut the heads off your enemies and massacre them? It's very, very clear that it's better to love your enemies. So we see here that both Allah and Satan have the same personality and attributes and nature of wanting innocent people to be murdered. Notice the second description now. Allah in the Quran is revealed as a liar. In Surah 13, verse number 27, we read, Allah misleads whom he will meaning Allah gives wrong directions or tells lies. If you compare Satan in the Bible, John 8 verse 44 tells us the devil is a liar and the father of lies. So we see that both Allah, misleading whom he will, and the devil lying and the father of lies are both lies. But on the other hand, looking at Jehovah God in the third column, Titus 1 verse 2, we read it, God that cannot lie. And Hebrews 6.18 tells us that it is impossible for God to lie. Which is better for Jehovah God who cannot lie and does not need to lie with Allah and Satan who are both liars? Let's look at the third row now. We see that Allah is a deceiver or a seducer. In the Quran Surah 3 verse 54 we read that Allah is the best of plotters. A plot is a trick to deceive people and get control of them in some way. We understand that when the Ayatollah Khomeini came to Iran back in 1979, he told the people of Iran that if you let me be your leader, I will give you free water, free electricity, free schooling, freedom of religion, free petrol, everything's free. And the people said, oh, this is wonderful, please be our leader. And when he became the leader, he said, sorry, nothing's free. And he killed tens of thousands of people and he threw many more thousands of people in jail. And people said, you promised all these free things. He said, oh, no, that was just speaking to the people in the cemetery where he gave the speech. And so Allah is a deceiver and his follower, Ayatollah Khomeini of Iran, is also a deceiver and a plotter. If Allah plots, then his followers can plot. Notice the second column. Satan is described as deceiving the whole world. Revelation 12 verse 9. And even in the Quran 1539, Satan is saying, I will seduce or deceive men on the earth. But in the Bible, the God of the Bible, Jehovah, is a God of truth. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4. Which is better, for Jehovah God to be the God of truth or Allah being a deceiver and a plotter? Obviously, it's better to be truthful than it is to plot and deceive. Notice the fourth row. We discover here in the Quran that Allah does not love unbelievers in Surah 30 verse 45 and 5 verse 87. And in the middle column, Jesus healed all that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10 38. The devil oppressed or gave people a difficult time because he hates people. This just the same quality as Allah who does not love unbelievers. But on the other hand, Jehovah, the God of the Bible, loves unbelievers. In John 3 16, we read, For God so loved the world. 
God loves everybody in the world and wants everyone to be saved in contrast to Allah and Satan. Now the fifth row, if you look at that now please, we read that Allah hates Jews. Quran 5 verse 82 says that idolaters and Jews are the worst enemies of Muslims. And 98 verse 6 speaks about people of the book being the vilest of all creatures. So Allah clearly hates Jews in the Quran. That may explain why a lot of Islamic people hate Jews today. But if you look at the second column, we read about Satan. 1 Peter 5 eight tells us that your adversary, the devil, your adversary is the enemy. The devil is the enemy of everyone. He hates everybody. Just like Allah hates Jews, the devil hates Jews. But let's look at the third column about Jehovah, God of the Bible. Jehovah loves Jews. Romans 11.28 says, They, the Jews, are beloved. God loves the Jews. So which is better, to love Jews or to hate Jews, as Allah and Satan hate Jews? Obviously it's better to love Jews, isn't it? Let's look at the sixth row now. We read that Allah hates Christians. Quran 5 verse 57 we read, True Muslims do not choose to be friends with Christians. This shows that Allah does not like Christians. In fact, he even hates Christians. So he warns his followers not to be friends with Christians because they're bad and they're disliked by Allah. In the middle column we we read 1 Peter 5 8 your adversary the devil so the devil hates Christians and Allah hates Christians as well but on the third column we read Jehovah the God of the Bible loves Christians he loved us in 1 John 4 8 to 11 describes God's great love for Christians which is better for Jehovah God to love Christians or for Allah and Satan to hate Christians obviously Jehovah God who loves Christians let's look at the seventh row now we see that Allah hates Jesus Christ being the Son of God in Quran 5 verse 17 it tells us Allah can destroy the Messiah. So Allah is thinking about destroying the Messiah. Terrible thought. And Surah 23:91 of the Quran says never has Allah begotten the Son. This is because whoever wrote the Quran did not understand Greek how there's two words for son. But in the middle column about Satan, we read the dragon, that Satan stood before the woman, or Mary, to devour or destroy her child as soon as it was born. Revelation 12 verse 4. So just after Jesus was born, King Herod, inspired by the devil, issued a command to kill all the baby boys under two years of age. Why? Because the devil inspired King Herod. And this is the same as Allah hating, as wanting to destroy Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Both Allah and Satan have the same attributes and beliefs about the Messiah. But then in the third column, we read about Jehovah God. The Father loves the Son, John 3.35 and John 5 verse 20. Let's have a look at row number 8 where we see that Allah enslaves or binds people. In the Quran, Surah 33 verse 50, we read, Slave girls whom Allah has given you as booty. Booty means the rewards of war. And so Allah believes in giving Islamic conquerors, jihadists, slave girls to take for sexual purposes. Now this is a terrible thing because when the Arab Muslims attacked Persia and other countries, they killed the men burnt the palaces, burnt the libraries, and took the girls as slave girls for sexual purposes in their harems. Would you like your wife, your sister, your daughter to be taken as sex slaves by Muslims conquering your country? Absolutely not. Yet Allah, the God of the Quran, says this is quite okay and something that's commanded by Allah. Allah gives you slave girls as booty. And the Islamic religion is the chief proponent supporter propagator of slavery in the world in Africa and India they took at least a hundred million slaves in each of these countries in the last 1400 years look please at the middle column about Satan in Luke 13 verse number 16 Jesus healed a woman who he said whom Satan has bound these 18 years the devil bound this woman as a slave then in 2 Timothy 2 verse 26 we read about the snare or the trap of the devil people who are taken captive by him at his will. So the devil takes people captive and Allah takes people captive as slaves, like slave girls. But in the Bible, on the third column, we see about Jehovah God, the God of the Bible, gives freedom from sin. And Jesus came in Luke chapter 4 verse 18 to proclaim liberty or freedom to the captives. And this is why countries that believe and practice the Bible and are governed by the Bible have so many more freedoms than Islamic countries who are governed by the Quran. Australia, England, United States, Canada, Great Britain, Ireland, New Zealand, all these countries have freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of association, freedom to get rid of our leaders at the ballot box. 
but in Islamic countries they have none of these freedoms and they're ruled by dictators. So which is better, to have freedom as the Bible gives us or slavery as the Quran endorses and approves? Let's look at number nine. We see now that Allah wants people to go to hell in the Quran, Surah 11, verse 119, and Surah 32, verse 13. In 32, 13, we read, Allah says, I will fill hell with mankind. This tells us that Allah is keen and interested and wants people to go to hell. So if you can imagine, Allah's idea of a fun day is to send people into hell. If he has more people putting into hell, the better fun that Allah seems to have. So Allah has a great interest and great satisfaction in sending people to hell. But if you look at the middle column, the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, Revelation 20 verse 10. So the devil knows that he's going to lake of fire and he wants people to go there as well because he hates people. If you look at the third column, please, you will notice that Jehovah, the God of the Bible, does not want people to go to hell. In 2 Peter 3 verse 9, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God does not want anyone to go to hell because he created hell and a lake of fire for the devil and his angels. So which is better, Jehovah God who does not want people to go to hell or Allah and Satan who both want people to go to hell? If you look at the tenth row now, you will see that Allah permits murderers to build mosques. Umar built mosques in 637 when he attacked Persia and when he attacked Persia, he killed the men, raped the women, burnt the palaces, burnt the libraries and then built mosques. But on the other hand, if you look at Jehovah God, the God of the Bible, he does not allow or permit murderers to build temples because in 1 Chronicles 28, verse 2 and 3, God forbade David building the temple. David said to Jehovah God, I'd like to build a temple for you. And Jehovah God says, no way, you're not building me a temple. Why? David asked. And Jehovah God made it clear that because you, David, have shed men's blood abundantly in battles and wars, I do not want you building me a temple, but your son Solomon will be a man of peace and he can build me a temple, but not you. So Jehovah God does not want murderers to build temples, but Allah is quite happy for murderers to build mosques. Let's look at the 11th row. In the Quran, Allah allows, permits and approves wife beating. Surah 4 verse 34, those wives you fear disobedience, beat them. Notice this is only on the fearing of them disobeying you. So Allah says it's quite okay for husbands to beat their wives. How would you like your daughter marrying a Muslim man and the Muslim man beating your daughter? Terrible. But that's what Allah of the Quran endorses, approves and makes lawful. And that's probably why there's a lot more domestic violence in Islamic societies than what there are in the West. Look at the third column, please, and you will discover that Jehovah does not allow wife beating. Instead, in Ephesians 5.25, husbands are commanded to love your wives as Christ loved the church. And so which is better, Jehovah God commanding us to love our wives or Allah allowing husbands to beat their wives? Obviously, Jehovah God. Look, please, at the 12th row, and we discover here Allah approves Muhammad taking other men's wives. In Surah 33:37, we discover that Muhammad took his son's wife, Zainab. Muhammad went round to Zainab's house, saw Zainab, who was married to his adopted son, who was a former slave. His name was Zaid, and Muhammad looked at Zainab and saw how attractive she was, and he said, Zainab, you must divorce Zaid and marry me. She says, oh, no, no, I'm quite happy married to Zaid. But Muhammad said, no, no, Allah says you must divorce Zaid and marry me. It's Allah's will. So she had to divorce Zaid and marry Muhammad. So Allah's will is to divorce so that Muhammad can marry Zainab. But if you look in the Bible, Jehovah disapproved of David taking Bathsheba in 2 Samuel 12 verse 9. David took another man's wife whose name was Bathsheba and God was angry with David for doing this and Jehovah God was going to kill David but David repented and so God punished him in other ways. And so we discover here in these 12 comparisons that Allah has the same personality, attributes and beliefs as Satan, opposite Jehovah. And both Allah and Satan is a murderer, a liar, a deceiver, does not love unbelievers, hates Jews, hates Christians, hates Jesus being son of God, enslaves people, wants people to go to hell, permits murderers to build mosques and allows wife beating and approves Muhammad taking other men's wives. But Jehovah God is the opposite. Jehovah God is against killing people. He cannot lie. He's a God of truth. He loves unbelievers. He loves Jews. He loves Christians. The Father loves the Son. He gives freedom. He does not want anyone to perish or go to hell. He does not allow murderers to build temples. He does not allow wife beating. He disallows and disapproves David taking Bathsheba. So what do we discover here? We discover here that because Allah has the same attributes as Satan, 
that Allah is Satan disguising himself as God. And when the Muslim people are praying to Allah five times a day, they are praying to Satan five times a day. When they are reading the Quran, they are reading Satan's book and practicing what the Quran tells them to do, Allah's wishes. So let us reject Allah as being Satan counterfeiting himself as God and choose and worship and serve Jehovah, the God of the Bible.